Hey guys. Okay, so we are doing 7.4, and it's uh, we're going to be doing the formulas for potential and kinetic energy. And you guys have already seen these formulas, and we're using them pretty much the exact same way. So uh, this should not be a very difficult uh, PowerPoint, okay? So uh, let's go through it, and uh, hopefully you find it easy. I hope you enjoy the uh, dad joke. Okay, so... Three meter long pendulum with a mass of 4.2 kilograms is held 1.2 meters above its equilibrium position. How fast will the pen pendulum reach? Okay, so what we're going to be doing is, let me uh, grab the little pin that I need to use here. Okay, so we're going to have pendulums, yeah? So in this case, we have a three meter long pendulum. Here's my roof that the pendulum is hanging off of. There's my pendulum. It has a mass of 4.2 kilograms, and it's 3 meters long, and it is held 1.2 meters above the equilibrium position. Okay, so this is the equilibrium position. Uh, 1.2 uh, 1 meters above the equilibrium position is, now that's equilibrium position, okay? When you bring it back, it is some amount higher than that, yeah? So this is the height that uh, is 1.2 meters. <coughs> okay, so uh, there's everything that you need. So somebody is pulling it back until it is 1.2 meters above its original height. Okay, obviously it's not directly above it because that's not how a pendulum works. You don't move the the little pendulum bob upwards. You got to move it to the side as it uh, as it moves backwards, so you can let go and it can do its oscillating motion, right? Okay, so it says how fast will the pendulum reach? Okay, now you guys know the formula for potential energy, which is mgh, and you guys know the formula for kinetic energy, which is mv squared over two. Yeah. So if uh, if it's asking for the potential energy, like um, uh, on question number 1A, I ask you just what is the potential energy? You would just use that formula, okay? If it's asking you just what is the kinetic energy, you would use that formula, okay? This one's asking how fast will the pendulum reach, okay? So remember, when it's all the way over here, you have maximum potential energy, right? And when it's down here, you have maximum kinetic energy, okay? So, and remember, the energy um, uh, of the system, we're gonna ignore air, air friction, we're gonna ignore air resistance and friction due to the swinging and stuff. So we're gonna act like it never loses any energy, okay? So uh, the energy will always be the same. So remember, the maximum total potential energy will be converted to maximum uh, kinetic energy at this point. So what you wanna do is figure out what is the maximum energy, yeah? So here, let's, we have the information to get the energy right here, yeah, at, at this point right here. is using this formula right here. It's the mass, 4.2, times the gravity, 9.8, times the height, it is above its original position, which is 1.2, okay? And that comes out to, let me do it real quick in my calculator. I have a bunch of numbers on there. One sec. Okay, 4.2 times 9.8 times 1.2. That is 49.39. So 49.39 um, joules, right? And that is the total potential energy of the system, yeah? Now what I want to do is I want to find the velocity of the system. Yeah, I want to know what the velocity is right here when it's all kinetic energy. Well, it's at this point, it translates all its potential energy into kinetic energy. So what I can do is just say, take my number here, my maximum energy, my maximum potential energy, and set it equal to the uh, kinetic energy formula here, which is going to be uh, 4.2 for the mass. Yeah, The velocity is what we are trying to find, so V squared over 2. And you just go about solving for V. So you'd multiply by 2, so that times 2 would give you 98.78 equals 
uh, 4.2 V squared. Okay, you divide by 4.2. Okay, so that divided by 4.2 gives us 23.52 equals V squared. And then you just square root to get rid of that squared, right? And if you square root, you come out with a velocity of 4.85. Four point eight five meters per second, and that's the velocity it has when it gets when it goes through this position right here because it's translated all its potential energy to the, to the kinetic energy. Now, if you would have moved it up higher, it would have uh, had a larger velocity. If you would have moved it closer, so the height wasn't as tall, it would have had a smaller velocity, right? So uh, that's how you go about solving for velocity. Um, notice right here, that was the maximum potential energy. I ask you to do that in 1A, okay, to find the maximum potential energy. Then I ask you to do this stuff where, uh, where you solve for velocity. So this is a problem that's very similar to problem number one, okay? Now, uh, notice here, I never used the three meter long pendulum portion of this problem. I never used that at all. And uh, it's because it didn't matter. The, the height of the pin, the length of the pendulum did not matter. The only thing that would have mattered if, like, if its length wasn't 1.2 or something, because then it wouldn't have been able to move up 1.2. Yeah, it, like, it, like if you, if it needs to reach a maximum speed of like a, like let's say uh, the 4.85, and it needs a height of 1.2, and it's not a length of 1.2, then it can't reach that velocity, yeah? So uh, that's, that's, so this isn't used. We never need to know how long the pendulum is, really, okay? Not in any of the stuff that we're doing today. You don't need that. That's something that's not needed. And also the mass in this case. Look at what I did to solve for uh, the velocity was I set this equal to that, right? And check this out, mgh equal to mv squared over 2. And we solved for v, right? We multiplied by 2. Then we divided by m, right? And that canceled the m's, leaving you with 2gh equals v squared. And uh, then we square rooted to solve for velocity. And there's a formula to calculate velocity, and we we spoke about this formula in the past. Um, remember, or notice, and remember, in this case, mass didn't matter at all. The mass of the pendulum doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you put an elephant or if you put a paper clip at the end of this pendulum. It is going to reach a speed of 4.85, no matter what the mass is on there, because the mass cancels out. The only thing that velocity depends upon is the gravity and the height at which you move it above its original uh, equilibrium position, okay? So uh, those two things did not matter. All I really needed to give you was the height above the uh, equilibrium position, and you would have been able to calculate it because that formula will calculate the velocity no matter what. You could even write that formula down right now if you want to, and you didn't want to use all this. You didn't want to have to solve for it all the time. You just use this, yes? Yeah? So notice how it's going to be the same thing. Square root of 2 times gravity, 9.8, times height was 1.2. That, if you calculate it, comes out to 4.85 meters per second. Okay? So there's two ways to get that, that, uh, that answer. And they're really the same way. It's not like there's two ways. But if you have that formula memorized, it'll help you out. Okay? Or write it down or something. Okay, uh, let's do one more problem here. Uh, I have a pendulum. I have a pendulum and I want it to reach a velocity of 2.6. How high above the equilibrium position must it be placed? Okay, so notice I did not give you the pendulum length or the mass on the pendulum because I showed you in the last formula that, in the last slide, that those things cancel out so it doesn't really matter. Yeah? So I want to see, uh, how how high above the equilibrium position I have to move a pendulum that has a that so it reaches a velocity of 2.6. Now I'm going to use that formula. Potential energy is equal to kinetic energy. Yeah. 
because I'm setting the, the maximum potential energy equal to the maximum kinetic energy. Because we're going to say it doesn't lose energy, right? Okay, so I want to figure out uh, how high above the equilibrium it needs to be. So I'm looking for H, right? So I need to divide by M and G in order to get H. Now, when you divide by M and G, there's a couple ways of thinking about this. I'll just do it like this. Divide by M and G, throw it over 1 so we can do the sandwich method, right? So all I have left on the left-hand side is H because the M and the G canceled out. Okay, this times this will be my new numerator, MV squared, over this times this will be my denominator, 2MG. Notice the M's cancel out, leaving me with just V squared over 2G. And uh, I can just plug in my stuff. It needs a velocity of 2.6, 2.6 squared over 2 times G, which is 9.8. And I get an answer of... 2.6 squared divided by 2 times 9.8 comes out to 0.345 meters. Now that's, uh, that's how high above the equilibrium position it needs to be to reach that velocity, right? Now I just want to say something that I was trying to explain on the last slide and I don't think it really hit home too well. Was uh, So notice the pendulum has to be at least... 0.345 meters in length or more, yeah? Because if the pendulum, like let's say the pendulum's only like 0.1 meters in length, I can't move it to where it would be this high above its original position. I can only move it as high as the length of the string. So I mean, this would be the minimum length the string could be, the pendulum could be, in order to reach this speed, yeah? If you, if you made the pendulum any smaller than this length right here, you wouldn't be able to hold it up far enough to make it reach that speed. That's about it, yeah? Um, uh, and I hope you guys learned something. I hope it works out pretty easily. If you have any questions, you can message me or ask me to meet you on Zoom at some point. See you later.